Who's talking on this? I'd like to call this April the 6th, 2021 meeting of the Property and Planning Subcommittee to order. I would ask the clerk if she'd please call the roll. Representative Hodges? Here. Representative Leatherwood? Here. Representative Reedy? Here. Representative Sexton? Here. Representative Wright? Here. Chairman Moody? Here. Chairman Carter? Chairman Crawford? Present. Chairman Carr? Here. Chairman Carr, you have a quorum. Thank you. Before we get started, anything from any of the uh, people on the committee? Any special announcements or is it anything you'd like to say? Because you know me, because it won't take long. We have just two or three bills here today. But uh, uh, now next week will be our last calendar. So if you know if anybody wants to put one on, uh, please let them know. Seeing nothing from the committee, we'll go to item number one, HB 1315 by Chairman Reedy. Chairman Reedy, you're recognized at your desk. Motion. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I will talk right on the bill because we have already put the amendment on, correct? That is cor correct. Very we good. did last week. And, of course, uh, first I want to start off to re-inform you about the certified tax rate. It comes from the comptroller's office. You can certainly go on the comptroller's website to see where your city, counties might be at. Uh, there's several that this is, uh, bill is specific to. It will not affect the other counties in the state unless they go over the certified tax rate and in a good uh, representation of a certified tax rate. Of course, Houston County, my, my home county, is uh, it pertains to this bill, but looking at the certified tax rate for Nashville, Davidson County is at 2.755, and they just proposed with a tax increase, which would make it 3.788. And the purpose of this bill, prior to exceeding the certified tax rate, a local government, and I'm reading right off of the, the fiscal memorandum for those that are, are interested where I'm getting the information, the governing body is required to publish notice in a newspaper of general circulation in the county. The proposed language would require local governments whose ratio is 10 percent or greater who intend to exceed the certified tax rate to publish an additional newspaper notification and provide a mailed notice to each property owner within the tax taxing jurisdiction of the local government. With that, Mr. Chairman, I'll just open myself for questions if there's any. Uh, excuse me, I, uh, I'm a little bit uh, uh, off today, but anyway, without objection, we are going to take a five minute recess. The attorney's not here, we're at recess. I forgot my attorney's not here, I can't conduct. We didn't want to start without our, our good attorney here, Doug Garrett. Anyway, we, uh, I said five minutes, but we are back in session since all parties are here. Representative Reedy, you're still recognized on your bill. I renew my motion, sir. All right. Any we, uh, Representative re removes his mo uh, renews his motion on this bill. Any questions to the sponsor? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of uh, House Bill 1315, say aye. All those opposed, no, no, bill fails. Thank you, sorry about that, that. Moving on to the second bill. Item number two, House Bill 811 by Powell. I don't see him, we're gonna roll him to the hill. Powell? Okay, we rolled him to the hill. That make, brings us up to item number three, House Bill uh, 1515 by Cochran. That is been rolled one week. Item number four, Bricken. We'll roll him to the hill. Oh, he is? I'm sorry. Are you there? I'm sorry. <laughs> Representative Bricken, you recognize. I didn't see him. I, didn't, I apologize. I got a motion. I hear a second. Thank you, guys. 
Uh, this is a local bill for Coffee County. It basically will exempt Coffee County from having to pay an assessment fee on a land development company that is that's always somewhat in a uh, uh, financial stress, and the county has had to foreclose on a lot of their lots. It's it's one of those um, um, development land development areas that came about in the 60s and 70s, developed a lot of uh, uh, camp lots and fishing lots and things like that. And, you know, uh, private roads are in it and, and such as that. And so when the county forecloses on it, they have an assessment that they try to collect from the county. Now this bill would still leave the lien of that assessment on the property so any future buyers, when the county attempts to sell that property, the lien would follow the property. But it just keeps the county from the obligation of having to pay that lien while they hopefully just temporarily own that property. So it's strictly a local bill for Coffee County. It's, it, it amends the statute that currently Cheatham County is currently uh, into that statue in their coffee county would be too so with that mr chairman i'll be quiet and answer any questions any questions to the sponsor see none i guess we're ready to vote on house bill 873 moving on to full committee all those in favor say aye aye y'all are quite a bunch <laughs> excuse me <laughs> All those in favor of House Bill 873 moving on to full committee say aye. 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 Bill moves on to full committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank and you. We are going back to item number two. <laughs> Boy, somebody needs coffee. I'm telling you what. We're going back to item number two, House Bill 811 by Representative Powell. Representative Powell, you are recognized. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the uh, subcommittee. Uh, I have an amendment that makes the bill drafting code 6637. And I, that is correct. And I can either uh, explain the bill now, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, or uh, after the amendment's adopted. Okay, let's go ahead and get the amendment on the bill because it makes the bill. All those in favor of uh, Amendment 6637 going on to the bill say aye. 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 All those opposed? We're back on the bill as amended. You're recognized, Representative Powell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this bill is brought to me by at the request of the businesses in Nash uh, downtown Nashville that rely on tourism as their source of revenue. Uh, what the bill does would uh, permit Metro Nashville at the request of downtown businesses to increase the fee currently in place in the tourist development zone from the current quarter cent to a half cent. To clar clarify these numbers, a tourist will be paying a penny for every $2 on certain products in that downtown tourist area. Um, as I said, it's currently a penny for every $4. This is a dedicated fund that's currently used today to help incentivize events and conventions and enhance public safety. Um, th it's no secret 2020 has been uh, a challenge for, uh, for downtown Nashville. We had the devastating Christmas bombing and uh, we just want to make sure that we are keeping um, downtown uh, Nashville safe, and the, it's important to say that the security uh, in the areas will help drive the need for this utilization to ensure that there is a dedicated fund that will ensure that we maintain the sort of clean and safe environment uh, for the years ahead for downtown Nashville. With that, I'm ready for questions. Thank you. Uh, Chairman Crawford, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm, I'm just really concerned uh, about this, this is my district, so I really don't have a say so other than the fact that I've I've heard from a lot of people that live here, and with the, I think it was 32 or 38 percent tax increase, and and you know you you talked about the devastation with the bombing, we've had uh, tornadoes, we've had floods, how much more can these residents take by in increasing these taxes, you know? Uh, there, there's a there's a problem somewhere. The efficiency of the money is not being used properly, or we wouldn't be in this situation. How is this going to change that and make make it better? Sure, if I could, um, Mr. Chairman. You recognize? Uh, thank you. So this specifically is a fee, uh, and it's different than a tax. And I can outline the difference there, but I'm I'm sure you know 
of the definition, the difference between a fee and a tax. Uh, I'd say that uh, a lot of this will be um, go to the people that are coming towards from out of state to visit. Uh, largely the collections of that will go towards them. So um, it's not going to be um, felt as much um, by those who are downtown. So I think that's a key difference. And one thing is we, you know, we've had a lot of success in downtown Nashville, but we want to make sure we keep it safe and keep it clean. We didn't envision so many folks being down there. So I'd say that's the key difference. Um, and, and as I mentioned, it's just half a cent um, is, is what we're looking to, to increase it to, uh, is a fee. Chairman Crawford, you recognize? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and, and I agree 100% with what you're saying there. And, and I think you all have done a wonderful job in, in keeping downtown clean and, and where, where it's going. And, and I love this city, and it, it's visited by a lot of people. We have a lot of great attractions here. It just concerns me to the average citizen, they don't care whether it's a fee or a tax. It's still money out of their pocket. So it, it just really concerns me, but um, we'll see what happens. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman, if I could. And, and this money is not going to go you know, to the general fund of Nashville. This is specifically going to be dedicated uh, to the making sure we keep Nashville safe and clean for those downtown businesses. So I think that's important, and hopefully that will help us generate even further revenues for the state of Tennessee because people will come and spend their money knowing they're safe and clean. I will say uh, to the uh, to the sponsor that we worked with the sponsor and the people on this, and when the bill was first presented, uh, I particularly didn't like it either, but we went back, and since it is more or less like a, uh, uh, um, a not like you say, user's fee, but I call it a hospitality tax, or if you want to call it a hospitality fee, and it goes directly to the, the tourism board or to the National Convention Center area down through there. And we also put on there what it would be used for and I asked them to put that on there specifically what it'd be used for. And it states in there that it'd be used for the cleanup, for the funds are derived from the collection of this fee should be used prom to promote safety and cleanliness in the Central Business Improvement District located in downtown Nashville. And what they were having a problem was, and uh, in talking through them, was uh, people lining up in front, down in front of all the business and everything and messing it up. So they've done everything that I've asked them to do, but I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, Representative Reedy, you're recognized. Oh, excuse me, Representative Wright. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, too many screens in between. Yeah, that's that, exactly that's right. That's exactly right. Uh, and, and I'm along that same line, just wanting to validate, verify that the there's a fee being collected now, mm -hmm. and it's dedicated to improving tourism. That's right, and, and the, the increase, the, the user fee increase is going to help also improve cleanliness and, um, and safety. But there was also safety and cleanliness to begin with, right? So I'm, I'm just wanting to make sure that whatever was being dedicated to the area to begin with, is that going to stay in place? And then this is going to be on top of that. Uh, that's correct. So what's already in place, that's still going to stay there. And then this extra um, bit that will be uh, included will go towards the... the and and thank you for helping me work with that. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. And, I, and I appreciate uh, that, Mr. Chairman, and I appreciate your further explanation. I think uh, you, know, you, you hit the nail on the head, and I think it's very important to make sure that we keep this going towards its intended use. And, uh, and you know, I certainly... Um, and commit to that, and that's why I appreciate this amendment to make sure that's done. Representative Sexton, you recognize. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the reason I asked to speak was mainly because, you know, I've been opposed to these sports authorities and many of these uh, entities that are coming into Nashville that Nashville's not getting the taxes off of, giving them back to these sports authorities, and then we have to come back and put more tax, add more tax. Um, personally, I, did, I, I can't be for it because I see too much of taxpayer monies going to these large corporations that have plenty of money already. And so I, I think in, in that respect that Nashville and, of course, it's not Nashville's fault. I mean, we as the legislators, one that votes for that, I think I'm the only one that maybe voted against it. But um, I think that's a, 
a good reason for us to take a second look at how that we tax, why that we tax, and who we're giving it to. Um, because Nashville is a beautiful place, and it's in many ways the pride of our state, and we want it to be clean. And it does take money. It does take taxes. But uh, I just see that we're giving that away to some degree to uh, we've got a bill coming up now for movies and I feel like that a lot of these entities are holding us hostage that they might not have to pay taxes or they may get a tax benefit by coming to our towns and then that puts the burdens on our residents so that nothing against what you're trying to do I think you're trying to do a good thing but um, I think it's misplaced in the way that we tax our people. So, that's all. Representative Powell? No, I, and I appreciate that. Um, I would just add again that, um, you know, this was brought to me by the businesses downtown uh, that want to continue to, to thrive and, you know, and, and build off the success uh, that our state uh, and its business-friendly climate um, that we continue to maintain and, uh, you know, and benefit from tourists and having other people come downtown and, uh, spending the money that we can collect as a fee to help keep it, uh, the city safe. And, and, and I share some of your concerns with the sports authorities, and I think that this, this is different because this is, you know, comes from the business, but, uh, and then winning this, this fee. But I, but I appreciate that comment and certainly, you know, willing to work with you on, on legislation with sports authorities anytime. Representative Powell, we do have a gentleman here who would like to uh, address this. He uh, did uh, come to our office and make a request to speak. So we're going to go out of session right now, and we'll hear from this gentleman. If you come forward and state your name and uh, give your name, and uh, you've got about five minutes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I, my name is Tom Sturdivant. I work for Steve Smith. Steve Smith owns Tootsie's Honky Tonk Central Rippies, the Kid Rock Club, and the Downtown Diner. We are one of the largest sales tax in the city of Nashville. We lost, we've lost during the pandemic $679,000 a day. So you can understand. This tax is not by the city people. This is a tourism tax. It's a quarter of a cent. We came back. We did everything, Mr. Chairman, and what we wanted. We want a committee to control the money. It's not going into the CVB. It's going into the downtown partnership, and which will be for extra policemen which will be for uh, cleanliness of our city. Our streets have got to be hand-washed, and we've got to have people to do that. And this is what this tax is for. This is not passed to the citizens of Metro government. This is passed, this quarter of a half a cent uh, is passed on to the tourists that come to town that enjoy our streets, and we want to make it more safer than it already is. Thank you. Just, just a second, sir. Do, does anybody have any questions to the uh, speaker? Representative Wright, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Would, would this be uh, sort of a, a different perspective than may have been helped by downtown business a few weeks ago? It is. We, 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 we've all gathered with everybody. We've talked to all the people, and I can tell you that, that we have gone door to door to the people and said, look, don't we need to do this? And we, they're all in agreement. We don't have any... Uh, and it's in the downtown district. It's not just Broadway. It's the what we call the... Central Business District, so the new place at Fifth and Broadway, all the way down, and on the side streets too. That's in the uh, CBD, CBC. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any any further questions? <coughs> Representative Section, you recognize? What is the tax now? It's a quarter of a cent on two dollars, <laughs> and we're going to change it to a half a cent uh, on two dollars. So if they spend a dollar, it's a quarter. You're going to raise it to... No, sir, no. It's, a, it's a... You know the figures on it. It's a penny on two dollars. Okay. Yes, sir, it's a penny on two dollars. That's what it is now. No, sir, it's a half a cent on two dollars, and we're Got asking it. to raise it just a penny. Okay. Yep, two, the other half, so it, uh, two halves will make the whole. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Any further questions? Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for your time. Yes, Thank sir. you. We're back in session. And I will say this, and I'll reiterate this, and 
it's up to the will of the committee, but, but I, I did work with him on this, and this is not a, what I would say a tax. Uh, it is, it's a permissive. If you don't go downtown and you don't spend anything, you won't pay it. Now, that's what this, because I mean, our city passed the same thing a few years ago, and we called it the hospitality tax, but this is the very same thing. So I just want to make that clear, that if you don't go downtown, don't spend any money, you won't be spending any of this or tax or anything. So it is permissive. Anything else from the committee? See none. I guess we're ready to vote. All those in favor of uh, House Bill 811 moving on to full committee, say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. no. If you'd like to be recorded, be recorded. Ayes have it. You move on to full committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, we come back to item number five. Representative Doggett, you are recognized. You recognize, sir, Chairman Doggett. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee. Uh, this legislation that I have before you today is uh, something that has been in the works um, for at least a couple of years, like uh, seeking to solve a problem that that is um, very important to me. A constituent of mine came. I believe it was last year, right before COVID hit, when they had Disability Day on the Hill. Uh, a young lady, um, 19, 20 years old, uh, came in and uh, with her mother and her father to visit. And while they were here, uh, there was no room, there was no changing room for adults. And I'm talking about adults that have special needs or certain disabilities that they need a changing table. Now there are infant changing tables in restrooms uh, in this building and, and throughout numerous other buildings that are in code, but there's not anything there for adults that will support the weight of an adult. And unfortunately, so many times in public buildings and, and even in parks that have restrooms in different places, these adults have to lay in the floor to be, to, to be changed. And it's, it, it's just, it's heartbreaking to know that someone has to do that, has to go through that and experience that, especially in a public restroom, uh, if, if there's not a private family restroom available. And so in speaking with my constituents, I, I wanted to do something to help uh, that situation. And so they began looking at some legislation that had been across the country and uh, in working with the Senate sponsor on this, legislation come down to us uh, back earlier this year, and we filed this legislation hoping to put in uh, somewhere into the, the codes that uh, adult changing tables would be placed in businesses that were new construction or if they were doing $10,000 or more uh, renovation. Now, in consulting with numerous members and even uh, different groups and, and constituents uh, and, and, and people that aren't even my constituents that are business owners and, and such throughout even Nashville, uh, we've learned that, that there are some issues uh, with the language that I have because it mandates everything from uh, your small mom and pop business all the way up to your large corporations. And that was not our original intent. Uh, the original intent was to look at big venues, uh, sporting arenas, things like that, where there would be large amounts of people that they could have that private space for an adult with special needs that could go in and use those changing facilities. <coughs> Excuse me. And so uh, also meeting with architects, uh, talking about some of the things that, and I don't fully understand all of that, but there are um, some ways that they can do things through code that can help uh, address some of these issues when I believe when it comes to the, the, the parts of the building codes and everything else that they do. So uh, may not actually be needed, the way, definitely not the way that it's written here uh, today. And was also looking at a population or, or an occupancy kicker, if you will, to put in there. And so I, I do realize, especially with this fiscal note, <coughs> excuse me, 
probably going to be the biggest fiscal note that I've ever brought, somewhere over a billion dollars. Uh, impressive. But, it is. Uh, <laughs> it is impressive. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, I, I, I would like to, I'll, I'll entertain any questions that you might have, any suggestions from the committee. I have some ideas, but I'm, I'm open. Any, uh, any questions to the sponsor? Mr. Sponsor, we'll, we'll probably vote on this today, but I will tell you with this big, big physical note, the chairman does not recommend passage on this. And uh, I could probably just uh, take it off notice and send it on, but I will let the committee vote. That way we'll know that with a, with a, <laughs> with a uh, um, <clears throat> physical note this big, they would probably kill me if I let it come out. Yes, sir, you're recognized. Um, well, I think Chairman Crawford... Okay. Was, and then I'll be glad to speak after him. Chairman okay. Crawford, you recognize. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> uh, I applaud you for your passion on this, and I think it's, uh, it's definitely got merit, yeah. and uh, it puts dignity back to those that uh, a lot of times don't have that. I think it's a good idea. But uh, as the chairman said, uh, with a billion-dollar fiscal note, uh, I think you're going to have a really hard time. I serve on finance, and I can't imagine us allowing that to uh, to come out. But, um, you know, I, I think you're on the right track, but this may be something that we can't do right now, and we'll have to uh, deal with that. But I don't want you to give up on it. I think there's a, a, a legitimacy here that we need to uh, work towards, and, and I, I appreciate your passion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Mr. Paul, you recognize it. Thank Mr. you. Uh, might I, just a simple request, I, I think that uh, there might be some, I really wanted to get this conversation started is really why I'm here today is, is to get this on people's radar so that we know that there is a, there is a need across this state uh, to do what we seek to do. Uh, this clearly is not really the method uh, to do it, but if it might be the will of the committee, uh, a summer study or roll to the first calendar of next year so that we can continue the conversation. Uh, but but I'm open to it, however that you want to go about it. Representative Reedy, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, of course, that was going to be my question, if you're open to a summer study. And, of course, when I chaired a committee last year, I, I had a couple summer studies. It was good information came out of that. So without objection, Mr. Chairman, I would like to move this bill to a summer study in motion second we go to summer study and uh before i take the vote i want to commend you also we probably can narrow it down during the summer and get it worked on we start with big venues that being said all those in favor of it going to a summer study say aye aye, aye. all those opposed no thank you mr chairman we'll thank you all study thank you all very much at this time i'm gonna go out and out of session and pass the gavel over to chairman crawford as I have a bill on the committee. We're back in session. Uh, we're on House Bill 918 by Chairman Carr. Motion. Got a proper motion in second on the bill. Uh, see we have an amendment. Can I have your uh, tracking code, sir? Yes, sir. It would be, yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, 6251. That is correct. Do I have a motion on the amendment? Proper motion and second on the amendment. Uh, Chairman Carr, you're recognized on your amendment, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This amendment, what it does, uh, last year, I think, when, uh, might have been the year before last, when we worked on short-term rentals, uh, we just worked on them about them uh, of collecting all the tax and everything. And in these bigger these bigger tax people that were collecting all the hotel motel tax, especially up and around our counties up there, they would, we would collect the hotel motel tax, and they would send them directly to the entity, being the city or the state. Well, when the short-term rental uh, law got passed, the, the uh, Department of Revenue, the commissioner, decided he seen in, in there that he would be, by the verbiage, that he would have to take that tax, bring it back to the state, then resubmit it back uh, to the entities, whether it be the city or the county. So, therefore, they were not getting their money as quick, 
and they, they, of course they like their money and so we get work with the revenue and as long as we come up with this language and this language is from revenue he has no problem if this passes that from now on when all those hotel motel taxes are, are collected by these big entities that run all these cabin companies and and uh, 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 rental companies and all like that that it would go directly back to the entity and with that that is uh, the what the emotion uh, of the, what the amendment does and it, it makes it go directly back to each entity and with that i stand for questions You've heard the discussion on Amendment 6251. Is there any questions to the sponsor? Seeing none, we're ready to vote on the Amendment 6251. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The amendment goes on the bill. Uh, Chairman Carter, you're recognized on the bill as amended. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just renew my motion. <clears throat> Previous questions being called, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of House Bill 918 as amended, please say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. Bill moves on. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee. We are now out of session. <coughs> We're back in session. Uh, anything from the committee before we, uh, that's all. Right. Remember, next week is the final calendar. We should get to everything and maybe some of the special calendar. Anything else to come from the committee? If not, we stand adjourned.